Hi guys, welcome to the second section, Transfer Image Style Across Various Domains. In this section, we will start with Introduction of Conditional GAN. We will then move to Training Procedure of BGAN. Finally, we will see Image to Image Style Transfer with Cycle GAN. Now, we move on to the first video of this section that deals with Introduction to Conditional GAN. In this video, we're going to compare supervised and unsupervised learning. We will then see generating a fashion wardrobe with conditional GAN. We will also see stabilizing training with boundary equilibrium GAN. Humans learn by observing and experiencing the physical world, and our brains are very good at prediction without doing explicit computations to arrive at the correct answer. Supervised learning is all about predicting a label associated with the data and the goal is to generalize to new unseen data. In unsupervised learning, the data comes in with no labels, and the goal is often not to generalize any kind of prediction to new data. The generative adversarial network takes up a supervised learning approach to do unsupervised learning by generating fake or synthetic looking data and tries to determine if the generated sample is fake or real. But the actual goal of GAN is to understand what the data looks like either its distribution or density estimation and be able to generate new examples of what it has learned. A generative adversarial network simultaneously trains two networks that is a generator that learns to generate fake examples from an unknown distribution or noise and a discriminator that learns to distinguish fake from real samples. In the conditional GAN, the generator learns to generate a fake sample with a specific condition or characteristics rather than a generic sample from unknown noise distribution. Now, to add such a condition to both generator and discriminator, we will simply feed some vector y into both networks. Hence, both the discriminator that is d of x and y and generator that is g of z and y are jointly conditioned to two variables, z or x and y. This is the objective function of conditional generative adversarial network. The difference between GAN loss and conditional GAN loss lies in the additional parameter y in both a discriminator and generator function. Let's see the architecture of conditional GAN that has an additional input layer in the form of condition vector c that gets fed into both the discriminator network and generator network. Now we will generate a fashion wardrobe with conditional GAN. We will implement conditional GAN to generate a fashion wardrobe using a fashion MNIST dataset from this link. The fashion MNIST dataset is similar to the original MNIST dataset with a new set of grayscale images and labels. Let's jump into the code to understand the working CGAN with simple neural network architecture for both generator and discriminator. First, we define a new input variable to hold our condition. Next, we incorporate the new variable y into the discriminator d of x and generator g of z. We have defined the discriminator x, y and generator z, y that are different than the original GAN. Next, we use our new networks and define a loss function that is d loss and g loss. During training, we feed the value of y into both a generator network and discriminator network as shown in this code snippet. Finally, we generate a new data samples based on certain conditions. In our case, we use the image label as our condition and set the label to be 4, that is, generating the image of a sneaker. The conditional variable y sample is a collection of one hot encoded vectors with value 1 in the fourth index. Now, let us execute these steps to generate wardrobe images based on class label condition. First, we will download the Fashion MNIST dataset and save it under the data slash fashion directory by running the download.py script. Next, train the CGAN model using this command, which will generate sample images after every 1000 iterations under the output directory. This is the output of running CGAN using a condition label set to 4 coats after 80k iteration and 7 sneakers after 60k iteration. Let's stabilize training with boundary equilibrium GAN. The popularity of GAN is rising rapidly among machine learning researchers. GAN researches can be categorized into two types. First one applies GAN into challenging problems and another one attempts to stabilize the training. 
Stabilizing GAN training is very crucial as the original GAN architecture suffers and has several shortcomings. Some of these shortcomings are mode collapse and evaluation of convergence metric. Mode collapse is where generators collapse into very narrow distribution and the samples generated are not diverse. It violates the spirit of GAN. In evaluation of convergence metric, there is no well-defined metric that tells us about the convergence between discriminator loss and generator loss. The improved Wasserstein GAN is a newly proposed GAN algorithm that promises to solve the problems by minimizing the Wasserstein distance by providing simple gradients to the networks, that is, plus one if the output is considered real, and minus one if the output is considered fake. The main idea behind the BGAN is to have a new loss function by using autoencoder as a discriminator where the real loss is derived from the Wasserstein distance between the reconstruction losses of real and generated images. A hyperparameter gamma is added through the use of a weighting parameter k to give users the power to control the desired diversity. Unlike most GANs where discriminator and the generator are trained alternatively, BGAN allows simultaneous training of both the networks in an adversarial way at each time step. Finally, it allows an approximate measure of convergence M to understand the performance of the whole network. In this video, we've introduced conditional GAN.